Hi, my name is Craig with QNET UK. And today we're going to cover off the different ways that you can use a USB hard drive uh, with a uh, with a QNAT NAS. Uh, the different functions you've got from just being an extra uh, drive, an extra shared folder, uh, to being able to interact with it in different ways, either with schedule backups or on-demand backups using our one-touch copy feature. Um, so with some of the different options we've got here, um, I will point out that I do have a license installed on the NAS, which is the XFAT driver license. So if I look at that here, that's just added in. Um, you'll notice mine has an expiry, but it's just because it's a, a test license that I've been given. Uh, if you were to purchase the XFAT driver license, it's very low cost, um, so four US dollars there, and it is a perpetual license for anyone else that's actually buying it. Um, so I do have that added just so that I can have some flexibility with the drive with the XFAT driver because the XFAT file system will work on Macs, will work on Windows, will work with the NAS. It works with everything. So if you ever were to do um, a backup to a, a USB hard drive, for example, um, if you use something like the NTFS file system, you wouldn't necessarily be able to open that on a Mac to access the data if you ever needed to. So that's why I like using the XFAT driver. So that's just the, the first thing that I want to point out there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug my uh, USB hard drive that I've got, which is just a, a USB 3 to start a dock with a, with a Seagate hard drive pushed into it. Um, so I'm plugging that into the front USB port of the NAS, uh, which is quite important because that's the one with the USB one-touch copy. So traditionally on a QNAP, if it does have a front USB port, very close to it will be a, a button that's either right next to it or it even sometimes surrounds the USB port. Uh, you'll need to use that for the one-touch copy feature that I'll cover off in a minute. Um, so here, what we're going to get is a pop-up very similar to uh, Windows, for example, where when you plug a drive in, it uh, says, oh, I've discovered a new drive, what do you want to do with it? Um, so that's exactly the, the options that we've got here. So we can open the files and just look at them, open and view the files. We can use it for backup, which is schedule backups within hybrid backup sync. Uh, we can view the settings of the drive for things like formatting, seeing how big it is. And we can all also edit um, access permissions. Uh, and it's telling us that currently only the admin can access this device. Uh, and you can say, I don't want to see this message every time I connect a drive to it as well. So what we'll do first of all is go view the external uh, drive settings. Um, so that's just in the storage and snapshots um, um, application on the QNAP. And what we've got here is a few different options for the QNAP. We've covered these off in some other videos, but the external storage is one we haven't touched on yet. Uh, so we can see here that we've got a external uh, USB device. So the, the X-Disc X9 is my little dock, and within it I've got a Seagate uh, 10 terabyte drive. And it's telling me here that I've got it formatted for XFAT. Uh, there are options here within format to format it really any file system that you'd want to do. Um, so here we've got things like XFAT, HFS Plus for Macs, NTFS for Windows machines, um, EXT4 and EXT3 for Linux-based machines, and you've also got the uh, good old-fashioned FAT32 still there in the list as well. Um, you can choose to rename the partition, and you can even encrypt the USB external drive. So you've got different levels all the way up to AES 256-bit, uh, where you'd have to type in a key, um, and you can even save the encryption key down if you need to as well, if you were to enable that. Um, I've already got mine formatted, so I'm not going to do any of this. Uh, but this is just the uh, the level of detail that you get uh, with the USB drive as it's uh, as it's connected to the NAS. Um, you do also get a bit of a status notification up at the top there. So it says connected external devices, and that's got the USB drive in there as well. Other things that would appear here would be um, things like UPSs or, or printers that you might have connected to the QNAP. They would also appear here in this external device. And this is where the safe eject option is as well, if you want to safely eject the disk. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up our hybrid backup sync 3 application. In this application, um, you've got a few different options you can use. So I often prefer using something like the sync option if I'm doing a, uh, a scheduled backup to the device. So I would do a one-way sync. Um, and with the one-way sync, you can choose where you're going to send that data. So I would typically pick to the local NAS. I would click select, and now you're going to go from the NAS to the NAS. So if I was to add a folder that I'm backing up, for example, I'll click the add button. I'm going to go to the public folder, and I've got some jellyfish test files there. So I'm going to click OK. And where am I going to put it? So you can pop it open, and you can scroll down to the external devices section, and we can see that we've got the Seagate 10 terabyte drive. So you can click OK. So that's effectively going to send everything from within the NAS public jellyfish test files folder 
um, to the Seagate 10 terabyte drive that I've got attached. Uh, you can add more paired folders if you've got more data that you want to add as well. And then you can set the schedule if you want to as well. So that's one way to get files uh, to the backup drive. Um, other options we've got is under the services section. So in here we do have other options for things like backing up with Time Machine, um, enabling the backup server options, which can do uh, NAS to NAS backups like the rsync server or the RTRR server. But at the bottom we do have the USB one touch copy option. Um, so it's sense that connected to the front USB drive, uh, the USB port, I've connected a USB drive, it's detected that there. Um, now the default setting for it is just as an external storage drive. Me pushing the button surrounding the USB port right now will not do anything. Uh, you do have options here to enable the one-touch copy or do a smart import option. Um, I'll cover off the USB one-touch copy option. Here you go into the settings for it. So the first question you've got to deal with is the backup mode. So is it being backed up to the NAS? So things from the USB drive going into the NAS. Or is it going the other way around? So backup connected to the USB drive. So I'm going to do from the NAS to the USB drive. And we can see as we select different options, the arrows change here. So if it's backup to NAS, the arrows point towards the picture of the NAS. If we change it to backup to the USB drive, the arrows point the other way. Uh, you've got different backup actions. So you've got add directory, which is basically just do a, a full copy uh, of, of the device. So it will add a new directory um, of the data from the next backup. Uh, you've got a copy, which is literally just a direct copy of whatever jobs we select here underneath. And you've got a synchronize, which is a bit more like the incremental. So it's going to check what's new um, since the last time the button was pushed, and it's only going to send what's new. So we'll choose the synchronize option. Um, you do get a little bit of warning there that any duplicates will be overwritten uh, with the source data. So it's very important to make sure you're setting this up correctly. Um, so we're going to add a paired folder. So the paired folder we're going to choose is in the public folder, the Jellyfish test files. And we're going to send it across to the front USB uh, port there. And we're going to click OK. So we're sending data from the public slash Jellyfish test files folder to the front USB port 1. And you can even have it automatically unmount the USB drive once the uh, backup is finished and enable a buzzer if it's finished. So I'm going to untick both of those. And I'm going to click apply and then apply finally. So now I've configured the USB one touch copy button. Um, so now if I was to push the uh, USB one touch copy button on the front of the NAS, it's effectively going to initiate a, uh, a copy, the job that I just created there. So it's going to uh, take a copy of those uh, jellyfish test files that I've got in the NAS and it's going to go and put them um, onto the attached USB drive that's plugged into that front USB port. Um, so it's a very quick and easy option. Um, some other examples of good uses for this would be if you have a digital camera that can be seen as a USB mass storage device. Uh, you could set the one-touch copy to work in the other direction uh, where it's copying data from the camera into the NAS. So this way you can offload everything from the memory card in the camera into the NAS without getting a computer involved to do any copying or clearing of memory cards. Once the copy's finished, you could erase the memory card and go off and take some more pictures if you wanted to. So that's a, a good option to use for the uh, for the USB uh, connected option there on the on the um, uh, the one touch copy button as well. So if we go and look at the smart import options that we've got available, so the smart import option is really just a destination. So it's an import. So it's taking um, items from the USB drive into the NAS. So it's going to do media files only. Um, so if you had things like Excel documents, Word documents, it's not going to copy those. This is really the option that you'd want uh, if you were doing it for multimedia items from, say, a digital camera. Um, you really just pick the destination of where it's going to go. So we'll say the public folder, and you can apply that. So now if I was to push the one-touch copy button, it's just going to pull uh, multimedia files. So things like video files, photo files, it's just going to pull those in and effectively ignore everything else that's on the device. Um, so that's effectively the, the USB drive connectivity um, with, within a QNAP. So you can use it for a lot of different things. Um, if you did want to just use it as an extra folder, you can go to the file station option here, and you will see that the Seagate 10 terabyte drive that I, I had created um, uh, earlier from when the mount was done from the formatting, um, that's just here on the uh, uh, 
the, the file station list. So if you wanted to just connect a file, a connector drive, you can do that. So if you wanted to copy, for example, these jellyfish test files that I've got, you can right click it and say, I want to copy to, you can select the destination and you can pick the Seagate option and just click OK. And that's going to immediately start a background task of copying the data from within the NAS to the USB drive. So it's a bit more of a uh, manual process to, to get the files over, but that's, uh, that's another way that you can manage it if you didn't want to use the one touch copy and you didn't want to schedule a backup just for a, a one-off task like this that's copying in some files. Uh, and because it's USB 3, it does move it does move quite fast. And this NAS does support uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2, so that's 10 gig a second. Um, but the USB drive I've got connected is just Gen 1, so it's only 5 gig a second at the, uh, the max speed. Um, and it's just a single hard drive, so that's probably more the limiting factor. Um, but we can see that the data is just copying in there with the background task. Uh, so once that's finished, those those files that I've got are all going to be uh, copied to that device. If I want to safely eject it, there's the option at the top that I showed you earlier, so I can eject it and go uh, plug that into a computer if I wanted to directly. So there's a lot of different options that you can do uh, with with a connected USB drive to the NAS. Uh, you can even rotate drives in and out. So maybe you want five drives set up Monday to Friday, and you want to have a different backup drive for different days of the week, that's also an option that you can do if things like um, another NAS is not required because your data size is too small for that. Um, perhaps you just want to um, have an offsite backup, so it's a good way to do an offsite backup where somebody would be responsible for taking that drive with them. Definitely recommended to use encryption for that. Uh, but we can see there that the um, the backup job has completed. Uh, so the copy job has completed there. So it's gone there uh, one minute, 13 seconds to copy over uh, 16 and a half gigs to that backup drive. So if we were to go down here, we've now got those same jellyfish test files that are in the NAS. Uh, they're now attached to the uh, to the USB drive that's attached as well. OK, uh, thanks a lot for watching. If anybody does have any questions, um, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. We are pretty quick at replying. Um, so yeah, please do please do get in touch and uh, check out some of the other videos on the channel as well. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.